This is a video that goes along with uh, Trimble Business Center working with surfaces article I did and I want to go over some of the things that I talked about in the article but are easier to to kind of show on the screen. Now when we talk about importing a land XML one of the great things about Business Center is you can drag and drop and that's fine but I want to kind of show you why you may not want to do that all the time. Um, you'll see down here in the settings that we have some options and you can play with these with XML files and I'm, I'm going to do uh, an article and a video on XML because it's 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 got a lot of power but there's a lot of pitfalls in there and I'll kind of um, show you some of what's going on uh, with that so I'm going to come through and and import this file um, I'll leave the name source as the surface name which is in the XML header and again we'll talk about that later I'm just going to import this and I want to use both definitions just to kind of show you uh, what's going on. We're going to do point break line surface and we're going to do a triangle based surface and we're just going to import that and it's going to give us uh, uh, two surfaces, basically two sets of data. They're going to show us uh, some different things that'll that'll kind of let you know um, how you can manipulate and import data. Now the first thing I want to do is go in here just for the heck of it, let's just change these surface colors real quick so we can we can kind of look at what we're doing here. Um, Let's see, this is points and break lines. We'll just make that green. And then we'll come here and go to the properties of this one and make this one blue. There we go. Make it lighter so we can see it. Okay. All right, so now that I've got the, the two different surfaces, two different colors, you can kind of see that, that the tin lines don't actually line up. And the difference is uh, one of the surface is the triangles imported. Now, I brought this file in um, that was made in another program. So it truly is an XML uh, that is broken up into uh, the various pieces because that's what we asked it to upon import. And I just want to caution you that you have to be careful uh, what you're going to use and what it's going to do. And let me just see if I can get a, a good example of something like this here. Um, and strike across this. You'll see that um, one of these surfaces, uh, the green one, isn't what I wanted it to be. The blue surface is more of what we wanted. This is some sort of, uh, uh, looks like a handicap ramp that's coming in off the sidewalk here. And because the definition didn't have all the details in it, we're losing uh, some important information. And you can see here when I bring back in the points, um, these points help define, which is what this green surface was, but it also needs these tri lines to bring in those slopes and break lines that run across this uh, this surface to give those vertical lines to it. So be careful of how you import things, but also it allows you to break them up and work on those different elements and then put them back together and make a, a trimble surface out of it. And that allows you better detail if you're trying to fix something that you've been given uh, without the benefit of a lot of additional information. Now I want to quickly go over the, uh, uh, the properties tag because it's really nice to see what you can do with these things and I'll turn this on and these other things off and here we have um, this surface that we're uh, we're looking at and I talk about in the article uh, alignment based surfaces and obviously for a site like this that's not going to be a big deal we're not going to mess with that um, but I just want you to pay attention down here to a lot of these details that you can turn on in the um, uh, in the properties to give you a better idea of what you're trying to do uh, to make the surface perform but most importantly uh, to kind of review it especially if it's one that you or somebody that you know hasn't done it's a real great idea to utilize and leverage uh, the tools visually to improve the quality of what you're looking at with the surface um, Right now, I'll switch files and let's talk about some more things. Now I'd like to talk about some of the other commands I mentioned that are going to help us in the actual production and detailing of our data. Uh, the one I want to do next is the drape command. Now, what I've done here is I've just drawn a, a, a quick polyline um, 
and I put it on a layer called 3D Drape because that's where I'm going to, to put it because I, I like the ability um, to turn things on and off, move them in and out, and relate to the surface. So this is what we're going to do. So I've got this line, and what I want to do is execute uh, the Drape command. So I'm going to Drape Objects. Now, it, this was already selected, so I don't have to do anything. And let's put on 3D Drape Layer. And I'm just going to make this a sharp line, and I'm going to select one. And you can obviously pick to select multiple, and you can use the options to select everything on a layer. If you've got some 2D curb line, I'll show you why that could help uh, in a minute. So I'm going to click on Apply, and we've now created a drape line. And what I want to do is just bring a 3D view in, and you'll see that that line is on the surface and it is elevated every time it crosses a tin line so this thing is just laying there uh, able to do what we want now here's another thing that you can do after you execute the command you can click on this line pick on the properties and what you can do is you can take and move it now you can take that line and I just moved it three feet out and if I want to make it a foot higher I can do that and now you'll see that that line is above the surface by a foot so it really is a great tool for taking the line and moving it now this comes into play when I've got a curb line and I want to take and drape a line over my top back a curb and then do a 3D curb offset. This allows me to go in, pick that line, and then get the properties of it and move it as opposed to doing an offset the line because I've already got a top back a curb line. I just want to take that drape line and move it out. Um, it's just one of those little tricks that, that helps you to move things along a lot quicker. Let's take this idea and expand on it a little bit. Let's say I do have something here that I wanted to work with and I was going to take this line and use it for a staking line but I wanted to do offset staking and this is where offsetting that line becomes an advantage to help me kind of move things along to make things a little bit easier and also gives me something that I can snap to in the office and also guide to in the field. I want to get this drape command and the line that I generated. Let's say we need to do something with it and I want to do some offsetting. So we have the ability uh, when we offset a line and to do 3D and 2D offsets and this is going to be, um, let's say um, we have a, a grade break and I do want to kind of stake it off to the side because it's the top of a slope and it's going to get obliterated if I do something. And I'll give it a name and let's put it on our 3D drape. And I'm going to pick the line I want to offset. And this command is, is, is relatively easy. And I'm going to offset it. Uh, uh, 10 feet and what I do is I tab through and you'll see that this has got some dots around it here um, I'll kind of go back and show you there it is showing 10 feet I tab it highlights that and then it brings me a rubber band so I want to go to this side and my vertical offset uh, is going to stay at zero and I can offset a segment if I wanted to and pick that but I'm going to apply that and get that offset so I can use that as a three-dimensional line that is offset from that existing one. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, surface tie and what that's going to do is allow me to take an item that is near a surface, let's say this pad, and give me slopes to the existing ground, or in this case the existing surface that we've created, and tie that in per my direction. Now in this particular surface, what we have is this little pad here sitting up at 600 feet. Um, that's close to everything, but it's just not touching. So 
it's definitely out of uh, out of plane with everything else that's going on around there. So what I want to do is um, click on my surface tie command and we're going to call this 3D pad. As I learn how to spell and pads 3D. We're going to tie to the surface to this uh, to the set of tri-faces. Here's my reference line. Okay, I'm going to select it. And then again, direction, I get a rubber band. I go this way. And this allows me to display the daylight line or um, uh, the, the slope lines as, I, as I'm going to ask it to do by not checking that. And let's make these, let's make them five feet apart so we can see more of them. And um, let's take a three to one. Uh, let's see, that should be ratio there. Yeah, and then we'll make this three to one, and we can round these corners. No, let's make them square because this is, uh, let's say, going to be a new, um, uh, a new dumpster pad that they want to dump in there. And now I'm going to add it to a surface. Now here's the thing. Right now I'm going to say none, but the cool thing is I can do none as I'm doing here, or I can make a new surface that's an aggregate of those. But I'm going to show you a surface merge after this, so this will give you an idea of, of uh, the, the process that we use to go through it. I'll click on Apply, and it's going to make uh, this new thing that attaches to the, um, uh, to the other. And you'll see it now is this thing is kind of sitting on top of there. And they're both independent of each other, even though uh, they're related, because this catch point here is tied into that other surface. So you can see the um, the advantage. Here's our new pad, and um, there's that new pad addition kind of piled into there. But this gives us a better clue of what's going to happen. So after I've done this, let's say that I sort of like what I did. And this is why I like breaking these commands up. And I want to take and say, OK, this is really good. This looks the way like I want it to. Uh, let's take and merge these surfaces. And this is going to be uh, dumpster merge. And um, what you're doing here is making an aggregate surface of what we just did with the other surface, okay? Now, the way I look at this surface one, I, I call it the outside surface. So that is the larger or the original surface. And then surface two, the one I bring in, is going to be um, uh, my new pad. And I don't necessarily need a clipping boundary here. And we're going to have finish replaces existing uh, here. And I can also keep uh, elevation differences and say OK. and that resulting surface is now an aggregate of those two. So here they are kind of together. And what I'll do is just shut off this tri-face surface. And you'll see that's kind of a flat pad there. And we'll come and look at it in 3D. And you'll see that that is now um, kind of taken and draped over that surface. And that new surface now reflects the difference in what we've done. Thanks for taking time to watch. I certainly do appreciate it. And let me know if you've got any questions. I appreciate all the great comments and emails that we get uh, regarding uh, these presentations I do. And we'll keep it up and keep on watching. Thanks.